Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today I want to share with you my top 8 tips for transitioning to a raw foods diet. This is information that I wish I knew before starting a raw foods diet, so I really hope that these help you. Even if you're not interested in going 100% raw, these tips will still help you to incorporate more raw foods into your life so that you can achieve a higher level of well-being. Keep in mind that these tips will lay a nice strong foundation for your transition but you do not have to follow them to a T. We are all unique so please make any adjustments to suit your lifestyle and health goals. And many people have shown a lot of interest in my personal story with my transition to raw foods. So I will share a little bit of that throughout the video as well. Let's get started. It's important to educate yourself before jumping into a change in diet. Although it's natural to make mistakes along the way, when you learn from someone who has already walked the path, it will help you to make the least amount of mistakes possible and it will help you to transition with more ease and comfort. This is something that I did not do properly and one of the things that ended up happening was that I ate a super high fat um, and high dehydrated raw foods diet for the first few, few months. My meals would literally consist of things like kale chips, raw chocolate bars and tahini uh, and dates stuffed with tahini. Uh, yes, it was delicious and it's totally okay to have these things once in a while, but it's definitely not healthy and sustainable to make these types of foods the majority of your diet. Then my friend lent me the book, The 80-10-10 Diet, and I finally got on track. Great educational tools include things like books, podcasts, YouTubers, blog posts, and I will link all of the resources below that have personally helped me along my raw foods journey. So hopefully they will help you too. Um, we don't all relate to the same people though. So if you don't relate to the people that have helped me out, definitely do your own research and find people whom you resonate with. I also want to note that it's really easy to look up to these raw food health gurus and become obsessed with following their guidelines. Please do not get caught in this trap like I did for a while because it stops you finding out what truly works for your unique body. I've learned that it's helpful to take bits and pieces of information that resonate with you while also staying really open-minded and experimenting with food yourself. Next up, you want to decide how quickly you want to transition. Some people prefer to transition overnight, while others might feel more comfortable taking it slow. Remember, it is not a race. Do it in a way that feels right for you. I actually transitioned overnight. My health was in a really, really bad place. And when a friend recommended that a raw foods diet might help me, I didn't want to wait, um, so I jumped right in. If you want to take it slow, a great first step that I always recommend is to eat one raw meal a day. And breakfast is typically the easiest. I recommend a mono meal of fresh fruit um, or a large fresh juice or smoothie. If you want to take things a little bit faster, then I suggest eating two raw meals a day. Breakfast, as I mentioned before, and then another fruit-based meal for lunch. This could be another mono meal of fresh fruit or a large green smoothie. If you want to transition fast, then follow the previous steps with a raw food meal for dinner as well. I suggest starting with a small bowl of fruit for like your entree. This will ensure you get a nice calorie boost before your salad while also um, satisfying your sweet tooth. Then you could have a large leafy green salad for dinner. Um, you could use greens like baby spinach, kale, arugula. Um, herbs are fantastic like cilantro or parsley. Then add in some of your favorite raw veggies like 
tomato, cucumber, celery, or you could even put in some um, thinly sliced apple. And then finish it off with some healthy fat. Avocado is my favorite source of fat because it's super easy to digest and so, so nutritious. Um, you could also use raw tahini in the salad dressing or some other form of nuts and seeds. Please make sure that you soak and activate your nuts and seeds. This will ensure that the enzyme inhibitor is eliminated and that their nutrients are bioavailable and effectively absorbed. I do want to let you know that I have a raw vegan salad dressing ebook that is out. It's got 20 beautiful, delicious salad dressings. So if you need some help in that area, the link to that is in the description below. Put aside one day a week where you go and stock up on an abundance of raw fruits and vegetables. For me, I do this on a Sunday because that is when my local organic farmer markets is on. And just get rid of all of your processed food and cooked food if you want to go 100% raw. When your kitchen is stocked up with whole fresh foods, you will feel inspired and motivated to eat these healthy foods and less tempted to opt for the processed foods. If you live with your family or friends who do not live a similar lifestyle, organize it in a way that you have your own fridge and cupboard space so that your food is all laid out nicely and things don't get mixed up. You basically want to create the healthiest environment for yourself to reduce being confronted with processed or cooked foods. So macronutrients refers to carbohydrates, protein, and fat. And these guys are the largest class of nutrients that the body uses for energy. I, like many others who are interested in the raw vegan lifestyle, end up reading the 80-10-10 diet book by Dr. Doug Graham. He recommends getting 80% of your calories from carbohydrates in fruit. 10% uh, from protein from things like leafy greens and veggies and then the last 10% from fat sources like avocados, nuts and seeds. I believe that all of these macronutrients play a vital role in a healthy diet for the following reasons. Simple sugar from fresh, whole, natural fruit is the preferred source of fuel for the body. Every cell in our body requires sugar. Sugar equals carbon, and this is why we call foods which are high in sugar carbohydrates. Carbon and oxygen are essential. It acts as cell energy, charging the battery of the cell, which the body needs to thrive. Fruits are also super, super high in antioxidants, and they have unique astringent properties which draw out toxins from the body, and they also help to move the lymphatic system. The fat in food serves as like a carrier for the fat soluble nutrients, making sure that we absorb them properly. Fats also help to nourish your brain and your nervous system, and they also help you to keep full for longer periods of time. Fat is essential in the production of hormones, and it is also the primary insulator in the body. It protects us from the cold and the heat, and it keeps the electricity that flows through our nerves on course. Protein is the building block responsible for growth and repair of things like our eyes, skin, hair, nails, um, muscle tissue, and more. Leafy greens, particularly the dark leafy greens like kale, for example, are an ideal source of protein. Something that I've noticed that can happen on a raw food lifestyle, and I think that I definitely experienced it myself for a while, is that when people do not eat enough greens, they can become mineral depleted because greens are so, so chock full of minerals. This might be a different story if you live somewhere tropical with volcanic soils, for example, um, which means then that the soil is full and rich of nutrients and minerals and then the fruit also gets that. But most people don't live somewhere like that, so the foods are lacking in those rich phytochemicals and minerals. So we need to eat extra greens to supplement for that. Dr. Gabriel Cousins, who's a longtime raw foodist, describes minerals as the frequencies of light. He says that they activate all the catalysts for enzymatic reactions in the body. Being mineral deficient can lead to many health issues and it can also result in cravings. 
Um, you can ensure to get enough minerals by eating lots of organic leafy greens. And I personally also take a mineral supplement just to be on the safe side. I will leave some mineral supplements in the description below that I recommend in case you want to do the same. I was strict with the 80-10-10 guidelines for the first couple of years. But as time went on, I learned to relax and become more flexible with them. Um, although those guidelines work quite well for me, I do find that I eat a little more fat than he recommends and I feel better doing that. I caution against following any dietary protocol too rigidly. There are so many factors that influence um, our macronutrient needs. What works for someone may not work for someone else. I know some raw foodists who thrive on the low-fat 80-10-10 diet, while other raw foodists thrive on like a 60-20-20 diet with more fat and more protein. I've learned to use Dr. Doug Graham's guidelines as like a benchmark, but then tweak them in a way that makes me feel my best, and I encourage you to do the same. If you are not sourcing super high quality raw fresh fruits and vegetables, I can almost guarantee that you will not stay on this lifestyle for very long. You do not want to be eating like rock hard dates, stringy mangoes, soggy papayas and greens that do not have any flavor. If you do not enjoy what you are eating, you will not eat it for very long. It's as simple as that. If it's fantastic quality, you will not get sick of eating it. Now I do understand that it depends where you live in regards to what kind of produce you can get. But do your research and find your health food stores, local organic farmers markets, um, wholesale fruit and veg stores, or other companies who deliver high quality fresh fruit and veg. If you cannot find a sufficient amount of quality produce where you live, then move. <laughs> I know that might sound extreme, but if you are serious about living this lifestyle in a healthy and sustainable way, then you need to be living somewhere that can provide you with the best quality fuel for your body. Find a community of like-minded people who also love the raw food lifestyle. I think it's so crucial to connect with people who have a similar understanding and appreciation of this lifestyle. This will give you support and inspiration to continue on this journey. Seek out um, raw vegan Facebook groups, meetups, um, fruit potlucks and gatherings in your area. And if you can't find any, perhaps you want to create your own. This makes the process so much more fun and enjoyable and you won't feel like you're on it alone. I also think it's really important to communicate with your loved ones about your decision to incorporate more raw foods into your life. I live with my parents and I tried to hide my new lifestyle from them because I was afraid of being judged. All this did was arouse suspicion and cause them to worry and feel confused, which ultimately led to many arguments. I feel like if I was just upfront with them from the beginning, we could have skipped that whole emotional roller coaster. And by the way, they fully accept this lifestyle now. Um, and mum has even gone vegan. So you don't need to go into detail, simply explain to your friends and family um, your decision for wanting to eat more raw foods, whether that's to heal a health issue or look and feel better in your body, whatever the reason is to you. That way you're being totally upfront and honest about your decision from the beginning and people are more likely to be happy for you and support you on your journey rather than turning their nose up. Uh, but there will always be those kind of people as well, but that's totally okay. Um, feel confident in your decision and keep doing your thing. When you start eating more raw fruits and vegetables, your body's natural detoxification uh, process will be enhanced because you will not be consuming processed or cooked foods, which ultimately slow down the process. Please be aware that there may be periods during your transition where you don't feel very good at all. Um, and this is because your body is working really hard to eliminate old waste matter from your previous way of eating. But just know that this is completely normal and it will pass. Um, how long it takes to pass depends on your unique situation and how much toxic buildup you had in your body. I recommend naturally supporting your body's detoxification process 
in your normal day-to-day -day life anyway, but it is extremely important to do this during transitioning to a healthier lifestyle. I made an entire video dedicated to the topic of detoxification with ways on how you can support your body. So definitely give that a watch after this video. I will leave the link to it in the description below. Doing this will reduce your detox symptoms and help you to maintain mental clarity and energy. My last tip is to please be gentle with yourself during the transition. Understand that this is a journey and there may be times where you unintentionally take a few steps back but this is totally normal and as long as you learn from those experiences and continue to move forward, that's all that matters. You will get there, don't give up. I went back to cook foods twice in the first few years of my raw food journey. I've been a raw vegan for six years now and although those couple of times weren't ideal, I learned from my experience and I continued to move forward and I felt stronger than ever in my decision to live a raw foods lifestyle. This isn't just a physical transition, it is also a emotional and spiritual one too. Quite often people know what to eat and they know what to do, but they find it difficult because they are so emotionally attached to um, their previous habits of eating and certain foods. You have been eating a particular way for your entire life up until now. So it may take some time to adjust to a new way of living. Allow for your own process to unfold and allow time for your mind, your body and your soul to heal. And please give yourself that much needed love and support along the way. So I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I really hope that these tips help you in transitioning to eating more raw foods. If you have any more tips uh, to transitioning to a raw foods lifestyle, definitely let me know, leave me a comment below. It will help um, so many more people who are on this journey. I love you guys so, so much and I will see you next week. Bye.